Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1 Tutorial 17. This tutorial will focus on current period inventory errors and adjustments. There are three learning objectives for this tutorial. First, to review the treatment of current period errors relating to inventory. Second, to prepare adjusting entries that are required related to current period inventory transaction errors. And third, to determine the ending inventory and cost of goods sold under periodic inventory costing. This tutorial is based on the Lexington Inc. example, so please make sure that you download the correct file and follow along. There are two requirements for this. The first will be to calculate the correct inventory value on Lexington's balance sheet at December 31st and the associated cost of goods sold to appear on the income statement. Our second requirement will be to record any correcting journal entries at December 31st. And the assumption we're making here is that Lexington's books have not yet been closed. For transaction number one here, not included in inventory, is $40,500 of chairs purchased from a supplier. And the order was received on December 31st after the inventory had been counted. So the vendor invoice was received and recorded on December 30th. So what this tells us is that accounts payable is okay but inventory is not okay. The reason why is because the order was received by Lexington on December 31st and therefore must be included in inventory. We don't have to make any adjustments to accounts payable because the vendor invoice was recorded in December as it was supposed to be. So no adjustment to accounts payable or purchases but we will have to adjust the ending inventory and we'll adjust that at the end. See, so there is no adjustment required here for the vendor invoice, but we will save all inventory adjustments under periodic inventory until the end. So because we're under periodic, ending inventory will have to be adjusted after it's correctly valued. So we do it all at once. So, and that's what we're doing here is we're starting to build up our correct inventory balance. So we start with 425 and we're going to have to increase inventory by 40,500, which was the amount of the inventory the chairs that's missing from inventory. Then for our second transaction, not included in physical count, is $31,000 of merchandise that was purchased on December 7th from a supplier. The desks were shipped FOB shipping point on December 30th and received at Lexington's warehouse in January. The invoice was received by Lexington and recorded on December 31st. In this case, again, we're okay with the accounts payable, but we're not okay with the inventory. And the reason why is this FOB shipping. Remember, free on board or freight on board shipping means that Lexington takes possession of these desks as soon as they leave the supplier. So even though Lexington has not received them yet, it still belongs in Lexington's inventory. So Lexington owns the goods. And the invoice was received, so no adjustment to accounts payable or purchases, but we will have to increase our inventory by 31,000. And in terms of the journal entry, we'll wait and adjust the inventory value once we have all our amounts considered, but we don't have any other journal entry associated to the accounts payable. For our third transaction, we have here included in inventory is furniture that's sold to a customer. Again, FOB shipping. So you want to identify these uh, as soon as you see them. So FOB shipping again means that the buyer takes ownership. So the order was shipped on December 31st, right after the inventory count, which is why it was still included. The invoice was prepared and recorded as a sale for 8,200 with a 65% cost of goods. Now we have to be very careful when you're looking at questions and data. You need to look at this is what this item is here. This is the selling price, but we have to convert this to cost of goods sold, right? Or a cost value based on 65%. And so this times 8,200 is going to give us 5,330. Okay, so this is the actually the, the cost value, not the sell price. The orders re was received by the customer in the next year on January 2nd. So this stuff's in limbo. The order was shipped FOB, and therefore Lexington does not own the goods, so the inventory value should be corrected. So we have to subtract the inventory based on the cost of sale, right? Cost of goods sold. And because the, the sales invoice and the revenue is correct, we don't have to make any other adjustments. So our only adjustment will be to reduce the inventory, which will happen after we've determined all the necessary adjustments.
Next, include an inventory, 17,800 of product held by Lexington on consignment from another company, so from a supplier. Now, the whole idea with consignment inventory is Lexington doesn't own it. So that inventory does not belong to Lexington. It's owned by Defiant, and therefore the inventory value must be corrected. So we have to remove the consignment inventory from Lexington's inventory account. There's no adjustment required because under periodic inventory, the adjustment is made after the inventory is correctly valued. So we save that until the end. The point though is that should not have been included in the account. There are no transactions, there's no bill from the supplier for this product because once Lexington sells it, then it will pay the supplier its cost and Lexington will then basically retain the profit based on the markup over cost that it charges to the customer. Fifth, this time not included in inventory, was a pallet labeled please accept for credit. So this pallet contains some desks costing $4,500, sold to a customer for $7,000. No entry was made to record the return. The goods were inspected for damage and none was found. So this is basically a simple return from customers. The product is good and go back into inventory for resale. That's what's happening here. The ending inventory basically must be increased by $4,500, and that's what's happening over here. And sales returns is going to be debited and accounts receivable credited. Our sixth transaction included in the inventory account were parts received from another supplier on December 31st at an invoice price of $8,500, but this time the parts were shipped FOB destination, and the vendor invoice, which has not arrived, hasn't been recorded. In this case, the order was shipped FOB destination, the goods were received, and therefore Lexington takes ownership after the goods are received. So no inventory correction is required, but the invoice must be recorded. This product was properly included in inventory because it was received on December 31st, and we have to make sure that we adjust our cost of goods for purchases and accounts payable. For our seventh transaction, again included in inventory, are some desks sold on account to a customer on December 30th, FOB destination. Now the order was shipped after it was counted. An invoice was prepared and recorded. Here's the price and the cost of 17875 Remember to watch out and distinguish between sales and cost. We're not concerned about the sales unless we need to make adjustments to sales, but for our inventory we're always focusing on the cost. Now, the, uh, the order was received by the customer on January 5th. So the order was shipped FOB destination, and therefore until it arrives at Intrepid's warehouse, Lexington still owns it. Now, no inventory uh, adjustment is required because the inventory is properly included. However, sales should not be recorded until title is transferred on January 5th. There is no adjustment required, however, the sales revenue has to be reduced, so we're going to debit sales and credit accounts receivable because the title doesn't transfer until the order is received by the customer. For our last transaction, Lexington sold $82,000 worth of inventory to Pegasus, FOB shipping, for $200,000. Now, this is a tricky one. The sales terms outline that Pegasus will be permitted to return an unlimited amount until May, and so since Lexington has never provided unlimited returns, it's not able to reasonably estimate any potential returns by the customer. This is a bad situation. And so what happens here is because Lexington cannot reasonably estimate the sales return, the sale cannot be recorded and therefore the goods cannot be considered sold. The ending inventory must be corrected by 82,000 and then the revenue be recognized either if no goods have been received by May 20th or perhaps recognized based on agreement with the customer as to when they anticipate no more returns would occur. We must add the 82,000 back to our inventory and adjust our sales revenue and accounts receivable accordingly. And until we have a better opportunity to estimate the sales returns, we can actually record that sale. So now after all that work we've done, we've determined that the Correct inventory balance at December 31st and should be 560470 And because we're using periodic inventory and we know how much the beginning inventory is, and the purchases, this is in the data file, we know that the purchases are 874665 We know the ending inventory is supposed to be 560470 
and the 275,000 in beginning inventory is also provided. So the net adjustment to our inventory is going to be the difference between the beginning and ending balance. So 560, 470 minus the beginning balance. So 285, 470. Then our purchases will be adjusted by the 874, 655 from the data file, plus the one item we had to make an adjustment for in transaction six, additional 8,500. So that's 883,155. And that feeds in into the T account. If we look at how the purchases, of course, remember purchases would end up going into inventory. If we take our beginning balance plus our purchases, mining our ending balance, we end up with an adjustment to cost of goods of 597,685. And that's the number that we have here. And the other thing to remember, you go, well, okay, now this 597,685 is not the difference between the beginning and ending amount. Well, actually included in this 597.875 is the beginning inventory. Remember that this inventory would have been sold. And so if we take this 597.685 and subtract 275,000, we end up with 322.685. Really all this means is that of the total cost of goods, the first 275,000 were in beginning inventory and then the other 322.685 came from this set of purchases that happened during the year. We could also have done an alternative to this. So if we have our inventory account and we know it has a beginning balance of 275,000, if we wanted to first, we could eliminate that beginning balance and record the cost of goods sold on that beginning inventory. So what we could do is we could debit cost of goods sold for 275 and credit inventory for 275 and that would get us to zero and then what we could do is say okay after all is said and done we know that the ending inventory balance must be 560470 i can credit my purchases we said for 883155 we would debit our inventory for 560470 and the difference would be a debit to cost of goods sold for 322685. If you see here, if I, in my green here, if I take this cost of goods plus this cost of goods, I will end up with a total of 597,685, which is what I had before. So this just does it in two journal entries. It reverses the beginning inventory first over here and then records the ending inventory. And so this might be a little bit easier to understand. Okay, let's wrap up with some key points to remember. First, uh, when dealing with current period account errors, always make sure that you highlight key dates and you're looking for events that happened be either before or after the year end. This will help you identify items that should be included in inventory or should not be included in inventory and help you determine whether or not an adjustment needs to be made to sales or accounts payable or something like that. Next, also make sure that you look for shipping details in the sales and purchases transactions. So remember, FOB shipping versus FOB destination. With FOB shipping, the buyer owns the goods. And if it's FOB destination, then the seller owns the goods until they reach the destination. And finally, under periodic inventory, all adjustments to the ending inventory on the balance sheet occur once the correct ending inventory balance is determined and that's what we did we saved all of our adjustments to inventory for one final journal entry this concludes tutorial 17a we hope you found it useful